G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. I've been saying for a long time that once you go black and white, you never go back. Or once you go monochrome, you'll start to find, I don't know, I'm working on it. The point is that scientists have known for a long time that revealing the truth in the universe is best done in black and white. That's why all those old photos of scientists are in black and white. Color cameras are great for capturing a moment in time, but if you want to reveal the mysteries of the universe, you have to do this in layers. And by layers, I mean wavelengths. You need to shoot them separately in as high detail as possible, and for that, you need a monochrome camera. But when you start as a beginner astrophotographer, it's easy to use a color camera. It's one shot. Maybe doing landscapes with your DSLR or leveling up with some tracking. But at some point, you develop pixel madness, where you obsess over every possible level of detail that you can extract from every pixel. And not to mention insufferable people like me always banging on about monochrome cameras. When someone is new to the hobby and asking me for advice about the best camera or telescope to get started with, it's hard to answer that question because it's complicated. It depends on what you want to do. And I always want to suggest a monochrome camera, but I get it, when you're starting out, maybe that's not the best thing to do. So I've never really had a good answer for this, but this changes now. The QHY Minicam 8 is a really interesting offering. It integrates the filter wheel and camera into one device with one cable, which makes things easy. And mono has always been king. You will always get better results with a monochrome camera and a filter wheel like this. But now it's not only the best solution, it's also one of the cheaper ones. Now you've probably seen some deep dive videos from Luke and Quiv about this camera and they are excellent deep dives. They go filter by filter, screw by screw about all the specs of this particular camera. This is not that video, you should check those out, they're really good. For me, I'm just gonna use it. This is how I always test new products, is just go out and use them. And as always, I will show you the trials and tribulations along the way for beginner astrophotographers. But I hear you saying, or typing in the comments furiously, but Dylan, you're not a beginner. Honestly, when it comes to portable astrophotography, I am. You see, I built my observatory and bought my way out of all the problems that beginners have. Setup, cable snags, all of that stuff. Going outside and setting up a rig, especially a small refractor rig, which I have very little experience with, is something that I just don't do. For that sort of astrophotography, I really am a beginner. In this video, watch me struggle like a beginner to take a photo of M42 Orion, like a beginner. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. The QHY Minicam 8 seems simple. It's just a camera and a filter wheel. But there are a few innovations here worth mentioning. First, it's two things, but one USB cable. If you're portable, that's great. Second, they've kept the cost down at every step without compromising quality. The filters are cut to the minimum size so you aren't paying for glass that never sees a photon. And third, they make you put some of it together. Genius. They don't pay for an extra worker at the factory and you get to feel like you've accomplished something before you've even taken a photo. Make sure you put the filters in the right way up, being careful not to get any dust in there, give it a good blowout. You can put the filters wherever you want, as long as you remember what filter you assign to what slot. But because I'm an idiot, I'm putting it in the order they wrote on the bag, which is also the order in the manual, because I will forget later, I've done it before. Also, when you put the filter plate back in to secure the filters in place, make sure the double hole is near filter slot number five. That's how it knows where it is with an internal light sensor. So remember, number five is alive. Install QHY is now famous all-in-one driver pack and the camera and filter wheel should now be available to you even though it's plugged in with one cable. I'm using Nina and it worked great. If you're a juvenile, you can give your filters funny names so all your metadata and your public light bucket profile are filled with absolute nonsense. This is the Frankenstein I put together just with the only small refractor I have and if you add up all the components of this little Frankenstein setup, it's pretty cheap, 2,880 US dollars and I'll put the conversion for Australian in there for my Australian viewers. But using the Skywatcher GTI mount, a pretty inexpensive refractor. I've got a bit of ZWO here. I've got the QHY for the guide camera and the Minicam 8 for the main camera as well. So all in all, it's not super expensive. None of this gear is amazing, except for maybe the camera. The camera is amazing and you'll see what I mean in a sec. 
Because this was all unfamiliar to me, I had to get out and do everything again and remember those steps to set everything up. I got polar aligned now pretty easy, but for some reason, the mount just would not guide. I went over everything. I reinstalled drivers, I reinstalled ASCOM, and after wasting an entire night, I'd realized that my system had reset these minor EQ mod settings that PHD2 recommends that you do for any Skywatcher mount. Once I got those fixed, everything was fine. But in the meantime, I was walking around the backyard like an idiot, scratching my head. And then all the other problems started. The main one being my mount just kept disconnecting. And then I realized it was just a loose USB port on the laptop itself. Finally, once I debugged all of these issues, I was ready to start imaging M42. But of course, the weather wasn't going to cooperate with me and it was really shooting through the sucker holes again, which was fine for the most part. I had to babysit things. I had to restart the guiding and recenter the frame now and then, but I was still getting data and enough data to make a usable image. When I got the results back, here's what the subs look like. This is a sub with no processing whatsoever. And I think it looks amazing. But when I got to the blue channel, my heart sunk. This looked like absolute rubbish. Now this is not the fault of the camera, this is the fault of the doublet I'm using. But before I show you the main image, I'll show you the stacked versions. This is the HA, this is the red, this is the green, and this is the uh, blue. But that's okay, I'm gonna work through this. And here it is, my beginner M42 Orion. that blue channel I feel like this image is shockingly good if I had taken this image as a beginner I would have pissed my pants I drizzled the image up so it was actually 7,000 pixels wide in the full resolution the sampling is good and the close-up details are absolutely incredible just for some context I will show you a automatic telescopes version of the same object. Obviously you cannot get this same detail with an automatic telescope, you need the glass, but also a mono camera with filters like the QHY Minicam 8 provides at such an easy integrated setup. Perfect for someone just starting out in mono. You know what I do with a million dollars? Two telescopes at the same time. Which is exactly what I did during the production of this video, filming Jupiter and using the QHY Minicam 8 at the same time. And I am short refractor curious now. So maybe I'll visit the show sponsor, High Point Scientific, who will sell all of this stuff and pre-orders are open now for the QHY Minicam 8. High Point Scientific have a price match guarantee and a huge range of products and they ship globally now as well. So visit www.highpointscientific.com and thank you, HPS, for your support. Maybe I need another little small refractor and do more of this stuff on the deck, especially when I'm geared up for planetary in the main observatory, which is taking away all my deep space object time. And I'm gonna tell you something that wasn't in Luke or Kua's videos because it wasn't out yet. It's the fact that there's going to be a planetary filter set as well, and also a photometry filter set, and also a smaller filter set for a color version of this camera. So that's four different versions and filter sets of the Minicam 8, depending on what you wanna do. And what I've always appreciated with QHY is that they still come from a science background. The fact that they will supply this camera with filters that are specific for photometry means you can do science with this camera. And if measuring variable stars or asteroid light curves or something like that is in your wheelhouse, then this camera will do that too, even though the camera is priced for beginners. I think this is a fantastic offering from QHI and I will be using this camera more and more. You'll see it again on this channel. So thank you for joining me for this video. I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.